Hello everyone and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and uh, just a couple of things I'll mention to you that are coming up. Uh, first of all, uh, winter semester has started at the Wellness Forum Institute, but uh, there are some classes that start later in the semester. So if you're thinking about the classes like herbal medicine, nutritional issues and controversies, nutrition and diabetes, there is still time to register for those classes because they haven't started yet. Uh, the second thing is if you live in easy driving distance of Columbus, the first weekend in March, we're having a food over medicine retreat here. It's a Friday night through Saturday night event and there is a lot of education. Some of our health educators are going to deliver some great information on uh, the concept of food over medicine based on my book. There will be exercise. There will be a lot of fabulous gourmet food. We'll finish up on Saturday night with a fabulous dinner that we all share together. And so um, it's a chance to uh, hang out with us for a day and a half and have a good time and improve your health and all that good stuff. And then, last but not least, uh, if you are interested in careers in this field, meaning informed medical decision making, dietary counseling, that sort of thing, we have some great programs both through our school and also professional development programs like professional mentoring, etc., that we offer through Wellness Form Health. So get in touch with us. Talk to me. Send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and let's have a conversation and see what we might be able to do to help you to succeed at this. We've got a pretty good track record ourselves and we can help you do the same thing. All right, so I've got a couple great things to talk about today, and the first one is a commonly recommended strategy for improving diets for children does not work, according to new research. Now, here's the premise. Um, a lot of people say that it's difficult, uh, especially for children, to make great big changes in your diet and to address the dietary pattern. Instead, it's better to, uh, it's often called this baby step strategy. You just do a little bit at a time and then you don't scare people. Little by little, their diet changes. And in the case of kids, just get them eating more good foods and then they won't eat so many bad foods. The good foods will displace the bad foods in the diet. Well, I've never liked this approach. I've always operated under the philosophy that first of all, if you don't look at the dietary pattern, you're not gonna see much change in your health outcome. Big changes in diet lead to big changes in health. And then the big changes in health become a motivator to stay compliant on the diet. That's always been my approach here. Um, now, up until this study, you know, it's, it's been my clinical experience and logic and the fact that so many diet plans fail because I think they don't create enough of a change in people to motivate folks to stick with it. Um, but um, anyway, now we have some evidence that what I'm saying is the case. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, researchers at Ohio State University looked at the food and beverage intake for 357 kids. Now, about half of the kids were eating fruit several times a day, and more than a third were eating vegetables several times a day, but the health benefits associated with eating fruits and vegetables was completely offset by the, th the other things the kids ate. Two-thirds of the kids regularly drank high-sugar soft drinks, 71% ate fast food, and there was absolutely no correlation between the two dietary patterns. In other words, kids who ate more of the good foods were not eating less of the bad foods, and it was the same for both younger and older children in the study. Lead researcher Sarah Anderson said, we assumed that children who ate a lot of healthy foods would also be children who did not eat a lot of unhealthy foods, and it turned out to not be the case. The co-author added, quote, this suggests that we have to have two conversations. There's been kind of an assumption that if you encourage people to adopt healthy eating, that it naturally leads to a decline in unhealthy eating. So in other words, what these researchers are saying, what the study showed, is that the discussion has to be about the dietary pattern you're trying to achieve achieve, not just the introduction of a better food or better foods into the existing diet. And of course, we've been saying that all along. All right. Now, another very interesting study has to do with gestational diabetes and diet. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the prevalence of gestational diabetes or diabetes that develops during pregnancy resolves after the delivery of the child is about 9.2%. That's a pretty high number, actually. Women with gestational diabetes have a higher risk of complications from pregnancy and delivery and are over seven times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes uh, five to 10 years after the delivery of the child. And of course, the reason why the risk for diabetes remains high is because most of these women do not not change their diets as a result of gestational diabetes. 
Now, according to a new study, women who have a history of gestational diabetes and who eat a low carbohydrate diet high in animal foods have an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Researchers followed over 4,500 women with a history of gestational diabetes from 1991 to 2011. And what they did, which is very interesting, is they tracked the amount of uh, the animal and vegetable intake of the participants. During the follow-up period, 722 cases of type 2 diabetes developed in the study population. Now, when the highest and lowest quintiles for intake were compared, women who ate the most protein and fat, particularly from animal foods, had a significantly higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes than women who were eating the most plant food. The researchers also reported that women who ate a diet high in protein and fat that came from plant sources did not have an increased risk. So clearly, the issue was animal protein and fat, not generally protein and fat. The researchers wrote that, and this is a quote, low carbohydrate diets may improve short-term glycemic control in patients with gestational diabetes, but concluded at the end of the study that this short-term strategy was counterproductive for reducing the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, the study illustrates several important points. Most importantly, a lot of strategies that appear to work in the short term simply do not work in the long term. In fact, it's often the case that a short term strategy leads to long term decline in health. Um, and the second thing is that the cause of type 2 diabetes is not potatoes and carbohydrates. It is animal protein and fat. So um, let's put that myth, myth to bed for once and for all. So anyway, the bottom line is, um, is that, uh, first of all, gestational diabetes is a warning sign that you should change your ways before you become a full-fledged type 2 diabetic. And the second thing is that um, if, you want to, if you want to reduce your risk of either gestational or type 2 diabetes outside of pregnancy, eat a plant-based diet, high in fiber, high in plant food, very little animal food. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.